Madison and Ian stood at the entrance of the Griffin for a moment. He looked dashing and elegant in his tux, and she was stunning in a simple black cocktail dress. Zack walked up to them wearing a warm smile. Madison stood on her tiptoes to kiss his cheek and whispered in his ear, Congrats on your big night. She knew what the rest of the party had only guessed at, that he was officially taking over the daily operations of Silverwood and the rest of the Greenwald family holdings. After tonight, he would be among the city's young elite, along with Ian's older brother, Daniel. It's been a long time coming, he said. He offered his arms and Madison took it, stepping into the room flanked by her brother and her husband. Ian smiled politely and nodded at people as he walked. Ian still resented Zack's attempts to interfere in his marriage, but a lifetime of Weston family politics had taught him to make sure his face never reflected emotions unless he wanted them to. He reminded himself that Zack would never do anything to hurt Madison, but that didn't make him a friend. If Zack tried to meddle again, he was in for disappointment. Madison snagged a glass of champagne from a passing waiter and raised a toast for her big brother. With you in charge at Silverwood, I feel like I don't have to be afraid of anything ever again, she stated. She sipped her drink and let out a little sigh. I'm really happy for you. You're the only person I could trust completely, and I'm glad you're finally getting your moment in the sun. Ian's jaw twitched to hear her say this, but he made sure not to react. He had learned that juvenile jealousy tended to make her feel less safe with him, so he stifled the impulse whenever it arose. Oh, before I forget, Madison continued, I know we talked about me coming to work for you, but we might have to tweak that plan a little. I'm going to grad school at Taylor this semester, but I'll be able to intern at Silverwood if you think the CEO will sign off on it. I don't want to put him under any pressure or anything. She winked at him. Zack laughed. I'll make sure to put in a good word for you. Rumor has it that he already has a soft spot for you, Zack teased. He and Ian got their glasses, and the three of them raised a toast to each other. Ian leaned in and whispered in Zack's ear, Make sure you look after her. I will, Zack promised, before being whisked away to greet more guests. Drink up, Mads, he said before leaving her. The rest of the clan is about to make their entrance. Madison's eyes darted to the entrance just as John and Stella arrived, with Kelsey and Luke right behind them. Her grip on Ian's arm tightened, but she showed no other sign of distress. She tried hard not to notice how many people looked back and forth between the two sisters, as if they were spectators at a tennis match. The animity between them had become a source of entertainment for the society vultures that lived for gossip and scandal and Madison was determined not to feed the trolls that night. She kept a blank smile on her face and reminded herself that Kelsey couldn't hurt her anymore. Not unless she wants to hear from Leo again, Madison thought. She watched Kelsey walk in and was surprised that she didn't feel much of anything. No warmth, of course, but not much anger either. They had never really had much of a relationship, and it was a bit of a shock to realize there was no emotional connection at all between them anymore. While the Greenwalds greeted their guests, their eyes passed over Madison and Ian as if they weren't in the room. Except for Luke, who had trouble keeping his eyes off Madison and her little black dress. The rest of the family ignored her completely. Isn't your younger brother supposed to be back in town today? Ian whispered in her ear. She nodded. Zack had told her the other day that Alex was coming home, but she hadn't seen him yet. I don't know if he's supposed to be here, though, she replied. Alex had just turned 21, so a family business function was probably not a high priority for him. She watched her father make his way toward the podium at the far end of the room, where he made a brief speech announcing Zack's new official role at the helm of Silverwood. But Madison barely heard a word of it. Zack also made some obligatory remarks and received applause from the guests before rejoining Ian and Madison. He felt a tap on his shoulder and turned to see Kelsey holding a small white box while Luke and Stella hovered behind her. A gift for you, she said loudly, making sure everyone around him could hear. Congratulations, I... I mean, we hope you like it. 
there was a wary brittleness to her smile. Kelsey knew that her reputation was on thin ice, and making peace with the new head of the family was crucial. She opened the box and presented it to him. Inside, nestled in silk, lay an exquisite watch. There was a brief, awkward silence. The woman Zack had been speaking with before the speech stifled a giggle, while everyone else looked confused or vaguely annoyed. Madison heard a man whisper to the woman next to him, Someone's a little desperate for the spotlight. I'm surprised she didn't curtsy. The woman snickered. Read the room, she muttered to him. This isn't the gift-giving kind of party. What's he supposed to do with it? Wear two watches all night? She remarked. Um, thanks, Kelt, Zack said graciously. It's nice. He took the box and looked around for a place to set it down. Like a magic trick, Nathan was suddenly there to take it from him and whisked it away. Were we all supposed to get you a watch, or just your sisters? Chortled a friend. Hearing the comment, Ian found his eye drawn to Zack's wrist, but his view was blocked by a few people standing ahead of him. He looked up at Madison, who was chatting with someone else. Could it be the same watch? He wondered in anticipation. There's no reason she'd keep something like a gift for her brother from me, he thought, assuring himself. Zack was laughing. What can I say? I'm a very lucky guy. He raised his glass, and his sleeve pulled back to reveal the watch Madison had given him. Kelsey paled when she saw his wrist. Stella glared at Madison and fought the urge to grab Kelsey and drag her out of the party. Ever since that damn press conference, it's been an uphill fight to win back Kelsey's reputation, she fumed. She was amazed by how quickly Madison had managed to fool everyone with her wounded kitten act while Kelsey was being snubbed all over town. Fearful of losing her temper entirely, she whirled around to find a place to compose herself, bumping into a passing waiter. There was a crash as the waiter's tray flew from his hands. After a moment of noisy chaos, three people stood surrounding a small circle of broken glass. There was a long, jagged cut on Madison's leg just below her knee. It was shallow and had not started to bleed but it stung. She winced, and Zack put his arm around her to guide her to a chair. Ian stared at Zack's wrist and saw the watch he had last seen at their apartment. He was overwhelmed by emotions he couldn't explain. Confusion and anger chased each other in his mind, egged on by the jealousy he had always struggled with. How could she afford it, he wondered. When she left the Greenwald family, she left behind the family's money but it seemed inconceivable that she would buy something so expensive with their money without telling him. He couldn't understand why she would have kept it from him. Ian! Hearing his name being shouted pulled him out of his trance. Zack was calling him a little. A little help, doctor? He snapped. Ian's eyes narrowed. Tell me about the watch, Madison, he said. She blinked at him in confusion before she realized that he must have seen the watch before she had given it to Zack and had assumed it was meant for him. What are you talking about? asked Zack, annoyed. She can't buy gifts for her family unless she clears it with you. She's your wife, Ian, not your property. His words were sharp, made even more so by the hush that had fallen over the guests as they all relished the thrill of yet another Greenwald family production. <laughs>